When you sharpen a plane blade, you have the option of sharpening the edge straight across or putting a slight curve or camber on it, also called a crown. So this edge might be sharpened straight across, say for use with a shooting plane, or if we're going to use it for a smoothing plane or jointer plane or a jack plane, we're going to sharpen it with a little bit of camber, and that camber is going to be dependent on how we want to use the plane. If we flip the blade around so we can see this edge a little bit better, so we're looking at the blade from the underside. This would be the face of the blade. Let's say we put a little bit of camber on here. So that would be a very slight amount of camber, and we could add camber or add more camber. So we'll look at how each of those affects the cut. So let's add the body of the plane. So we're back to the straight blade and the sides here, the gray, would indicate the sides of the plane. So the sole of the plane is, is along this edge here. So if we were to use this setup as is, we would leave tracks, right? We would make a very shallow groove that has these corners in it, and those would be plane tracks. So let's add a little bit of camber to the blade. So we've added a little bit of camber, but not enough for this depth of cut. So we're, we're assuming the depth of cut is here, but notice we're still going to leave tracks. So to use this amount of camber, we would have to take a shallower cut. So the blade has been backed off a bit. We're taking a very thin shaving, and the width of the shaving goes from about here to about here. So that would be an excellent situation for a smoothing plane. We've gone back now to the original depth of cut, but now we have a moderate amount of camber. And you can see the corners are up inside the body of the plane, above the sole. So once again, we're getting a pretty wide shaving from about here to here, but we've increased the depth of cut. Now let's say we increase the camber some more, but leave the depth of cut the same. Now... You can see we have more clearance inside here, but we have made the cut narrower, right? Same depth of cut, more camber, so we've narrowed the shaving. If we move the blade out to widen the cut like this, you can see now we've got the, about the same width shaving, almost the full width of the blade, but we've got a much heavier cut. So this would be more for removing material. So the bottom line is you want your camber, right, the distance from the edge of the blade back to the corners, you want that to be slightly bigger than your depth of cut. Okay, now we've, we've gone back to the moderate amount of camber and the, the moderate depth of cut. Now let's take a look at one more thing. At the moment, we have the blade still perpendicular to the direction of cut, right? That's not how we would use this. That, that would be more like scraping. But for purposes of the illustration, that was easier to show that. Now, what happens if we drop the blade down? Let's zoom in a little bit. And now the blade has dropped down to the 45 degree bed angle. And if we go back and forth here, you can see that we've lost a little bit of the effectiveness of the crown. Here, you can see the corner of the blade is up inside, so we're not leaving tracks. We drop the blade down, and it looks like we might have a little bit of a track there. So, so by dropping the blade, we lose some of the effectiveness of the camber. And if we rotate here, and zoom in, a little hard to see there, but yeah, you can see we would probably leave a little bit of a track there. Bottom line is the depth of cut 
is related to the camber, and your camber needs to be slightly bigger as measured from the furthest out part of the blade to where the corner of the blade is. That needs to be slightly bigger than your depth of cut when the blade's installed in the plane. Let's say now you're planing the edge of a board. So I've got that shown here, roughly three quarters of an inch wide if that's a two inch blade. And if you were to plane that as shown here, you would maintain the squareness of the board and create a very slight hollow on the edge, maybe a couple of thousands. If you were to move the plane to one side and start planing, because of the crown, you would create a little bit of a bevel on the edge of the board. Now we can use that in the case where the board does not start with a square edge. So we've got another board whose edge is not square. If we were to plane the board with the plane in that position sitting on say the corner of this, then we could get the edge of this square, but that would be difficult to hold the plane perfectly square to the face of the board. Now you can get a fence that attaches to the bottom of the plane that would reference on an edge, but let's say we don't want to deal with that. So if we were just to put the plane down onto the board, referencing on that out of square edge, we would get, as before, a edge that was slightly hollow, but just parallel to the original surface. Let's say we move the plane over so the center of the plane is more relative to the high side of the board and we're to start planing now, we would start to square the edge because of the crown. So in this way, we can use the crown of the blade in order to help us square the edge of the board. I think for most people it's much easier to put the sole of the plane directly on the edge of the board using that as a reference and then move the plane side to side in order to square up the edge as needed. When I'm doing this I use my fingers on the bottom of the plane to act as a fence so my fingers would be over in this area and helping me maintain this edge distance as I'm planing the edge of the board. So that's how the crown on a blade can help us regardless of the situation we're using the plane. The only time I don't have crown on my blade is for a joinery plane, like a shoulder plane, shooting plane, or rabbit plane.